We're, we're starting to focus more on dendritic cells. I happen to be in a lab that really, really thinks a lot about dendritic cells. I think there's not too many of us out there. Um, but so my advisor, Stephanie Spranger, actually published a very uh, exciting paper in her postdoc a few years ago, uh, finding that DC1's dendritic cells in the tumors themselves play an important role, which previously I think was not really fully appreciated, and that they can recruit T cells into the tumors, and that without them, T cells actually won't make their way into the tumors to execute their function. And uh, otherwise, I think uh, there's interesting work from the Chromo Lab also that originally kind of showed that uh, the tumor uh, resident dendritic cells play, can, can re-stimulate T cells and play an important role. It's also very interesting to think about uh, the different ways dendritic cells can present their antigens. And so it's canonically been thought that cross-presentation is an important pathway, and I think we still don't fully understand how that works. And so I think that a lot of recent work has also focused on understanding the mechanisms that drive the initiation of cross-presentation, um, for example, uh, it's now understood that um, you need dendritic cells to sense um, actin on the apoptotic dying cells, which can induce uh, cross-presentation. But then on the other side, we've in our lab, we're actually finding uh, by a student um, that in addition to cross-presentation, cross-dressing is, is another mechanism of antigen presentation in the tumor setting. And so just understanding more about how exactly dendritic cells can help guide T cell responses, and they do this, of course, by presenting antigens and providing other signals is, is kind of part of the package that we're all trying to understand.